Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my, the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I desire of the Lord that I will seek, that I will that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. Amen. So it is my great honor and pleasure um, to introduce our speaker, who is such a wonderful woman of God, such a light in this community, Tammy Durasset. Oh, she blesses me. I feel the same about her. <laughs> Before I get into the message, um, we had a request for some prayer. And Jennifer, where you at, kiddo? Is she here? She's in the bathroom. All right, well, then I'll just say my greeting. <laughs> well, wait a minute. So anyway, welcome to all of you. We're so glad you're here today. It's a glorious day, isn't it? That's right. God made this day. That's right. So anyway, um, we just wanted to lift Jennifer up this morning. Um, her mother passed away, and so when she comes out, we'll ju we just want to say a word of prayer for her. So wasn't the worship incredible? Yes, it absolutely was. We're so thankful for you, Robert, and just the presence that you carry and just how we were able to enter the throne room. Um, I just love that. So thank you so much. And Jennifer, if you don't mind, um, would, you, would you come forward for just a minute? And could I have some people just gather around? We want to we wanna pray for her. OK, yes, please. That's good. I want to especially ask for prayers for, uh, for Jeremy for doing the service for my mother today because I know it's going to be really hard for him, so this has got to be a lot, of, a lot on his heart, you know, but he's going to do it for me, and it means a whole lot to me. So if you could pray for him to make it through, you know. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. We're so sorry for your loss. We know how difficult it is to lose a loved one, especially a mother. And so we just want to cover you in prayer today. We know that the funeral is this later today. And, and like you said, Jeremy will be performing that service. And so, Lord, we do. We just lift up this precious family to you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that in their time of, of sorrow and grief that you're there. You are the God of all comfort. And Lord, we're so thankful that your word reminds us that we don't sorrow as the world sorrows because we have our hope in you, God. Lord, I ask that you would just wash over them with your peace and with your comfort. Lord, that you would help them to just cherish their, their times with her, with their mother, and, and just really um, see what a blessing that she was, Lord, to them. Lord, we ask that you would give them a, a supernatural strength. Um, I remember when my, when my sister had passed, I felt like I couldn't get through the service. But Lord, it was you that gave me the strength to endure. And so, Lord, I'm praying that today for Jennifer and her brother. And Lord, that you would just be with Jeremy as well as he conducts the service. 
Lord, we pray that hearts would turn to you. So, Lord, once again, we ask that you would just pour out upon this family, Lord, in their time of need. Lord, and just bless them with your peace and your comfort. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue to lift you, you up in prayer, Jennifer, and your brother. All right. Well, I wanted to start with um, a story from when my kids were little. We had just moved to Martinsville, and I wasn't going to a church at that time. Um, the 700 Club was actually my church. <laughs> The kids were little, and I didn't know where to go for a church at that time. And so one day, there's a knock at the door, the front door, and I'm horrified because all of the kid, all of the couches, or I'm sorry, all the cushions are off of the couch, and the kids are running around, <laughs> yelling and screaming and jumping and doing what kids do. And uh, so I, I didn't want to open the door, but I opened the door, and it was a circuit preacher from the Methodist church down the road. And he had stopped by. He said he knew that we were new to the area, and he just wanted to uh, welcome us and invite us to his church. So anyway, we talked for a while. Well, he left, and two weeks later, he showed up again on a Wednesday, and I caught on. It was every other Wednesday is when he came to visit. <laughs> And so I made sure that all the cushions were back on the couch. <laughs> and I made some tea, you know, so that I could offer him something to drink when he came to visit. And so we had some incredible discussions about the Lord and just uh, him fellowshipping with me and encouraging me in, in my walk with God. It was so good. And do you know that he faithfully visited me for two years? Isn't that incredible? Yes. <laughs> and I look back upon that time, and it's like, God, you're amazing. You know, he loves each one of us so much that he sets us up for success. He absolutely does. And he gives us what we need at the very time we need it most. And so I'll, I'll be forever grateful, you know, for that pastor to stop by and just share with me uh, the love of God. So anyway, as he was visiting one, this was the funny part, as he was visiting one day, uh, my husband, I've told you, he's a truck driver, and he used to be out for a couple weeks at a time, and he, he happened to come home on the day that this pastor was visiting, and so my oldest son was outside, and, and uh, Clay said, Josh, come over here, Who, who's that guy in there with your mom? And he said, I think it's God. <laughs> It was so sweet. And so that's, those are truly some memories that I, that I cherish. <laughs> so and this was so good, too. I got to take a little vacation as well. Last week, Clay and I went down to Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And so as I was sitting on the beach, um, just appreciating, you know, being out in the sun. And the, the weather was kind of rocky. I guess uh, normally the, the gulf is calm and so on, but because of the weather and the hurricanes, there was a lot of crashing waves, and uh, they even had two red flags out, meaning that you couldn't go in the water, but I just really enjoyed being there and sitting, like I said, on the edge of the ocean, and and just um, the the breeze and the, the the waves and so on. So as I'm sitting there, I decide to just turn my affection toward God. And I just began to tell him how much I loved him. And I felt his presence immediately. He just poured over me. And I look up into the sky, and I see numbers in the clouds. And I thought, hmm, you know, <laughs> he uh, gives us things that make us wonder, right? So I'm looking at the clouds, and it looks like these numbers, four, two, seven. 
And so I had my, my phone with me, and so I look up in my Bible, uh, uh, my Bible app, and I put in Psalm 42, 7, and it says, Deep calls unto deep. Your waves wash over me. <laughs> Your waves and breakers wash over me. And so I was just brought to tears again, you know, just how God loves to surprise us, you know, every step of the way and just show us how much he loves us. And he's in absolutely every moment of every day. And so I, that was just an incredible moment for me to just share that with my heavenly father. And he does. He just loves to surprise me. And so I did. I just felt his waves of love wash over me, washing away worries and bringing refreshing it was truly incredible. And uh, we actually got to have dinner with Jason and Shelly on Thursday evening while we were down there. And so Jason said, uh, so do you know what you're going to speak on? And I said, yes, I do. I felt like the Lord gave me a, a message, and he's been giving me some things. I've been working on it. And he said, that's not fair. <laughs> He said, God usually waits until the last moment for me to be, you know, before he gives me a message. And so we, we laughed at that. So anyway, uh, once again, not a coincidence. I felt like the book that I wanted to take on vacation was called Dreaming with God by Bill Johnson. And that's the title of this message today, Dreaming with God. And so as I was sitting on the beach and I'm reading this book, for the second time. It's that good. <laughs> so if you haven't read it, I encourage you to get it. It's, it's wonderful. And it just talks about uh, us being secure in our, our identity, who we are and who God has created us to be, to do those great things for God. So anyway, um, as I was sitting there and just reading this book, the Lord did. He just began to, to download some things and just wanted me to encourage you this morning to dream with him. And I uh, wanted to share that years ago, I had gone to a conference with Lance Wellnow. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him, but he's a wonderful speaker. He's got some incredible books out. Um, and so anyway, I'd gone to this conference, and he was sharing with us about the seven mountains. And I know we've mentioned that before, that each one of us have a mountain of influence, if not one, maybe more. I mean, there's a possibility that you actually have more than one mountain of influence. And so he was encouraging us to really dream and to dream big about those mountains of influence in our lives. And um, I'll just mention what those mountains are. They are family, religion, business, government, education, media, arts, entertainment. And so he encouraged us to dream God-sized dreams, not little dreams, not what you've been kind of used to. And so on the way home, a friend asked me, what are your dreams? And I realized at that moment, I didn't have any. I had not allowed myself to dream. Um, I know I've told many of you my story about, you know, my dad being an alcoholic and my mom was sick during my growing up years. She actually died from cirrhosis, which I think is so ironic that my dad was the alcoholic that she ends up dying from cirrhosis because we had had a well that was contaminated and she ended up coming down with hepatitis and it damaged her liver. And so that's what she ended up dying from. And so, you know, I had that going on and then, um, well, my dad died when I was 19. My mom passed when I was 23. Clay and I married when I was 22. And we both grew up in extreme dysfunction uh, we married not knowing what a so-called normal life even looked like. We had no positive role mo models. We weren't Christians. And so we, you know, we both came into a marriage with a bunch of baggage. And once again, just trying to survive. And I was in survival mode. And I think, well, I felt like that's one point that the Lord wanted me to make today that many of us have been in survival mode. We're just trying to get through. You know, we're just trying to live every day to the best of our ability. 
we're going to work, we're trying to make family work, you know, we're trying to be the best parents that we can be, and God says to dream big and to dream dreams. What does that even look like? And so I really started pursuing that. You know, it's like, okay, God, if you have big dreams for me to accomplish for your kingdom, what would those be? And he took me on a journey of just really looking at my, my life and what I had gone through in those growing up years and so on. And I actually read a book uh, that talked about being thankful for your life. And years ago, I thought, are you serious, Lord? You know, you want me to be thankful for all of this dysfunction and the things that I've gone through? But it wasn't until I made that decision to really go after God and ask him into my heart that things began to change and my attitude began to change. And I started seeing my former life through the eyes of Christ, seeing that his hand of protection was on me and that he brought me through all of these different situations. And so I came to a point where I could honestly thank him for the things that I had gone through because it gave me an understanding and a compassion for people that maybe have gone through similar types of things. And so I was, once again, just so thankful that God let me see my, my life through his eyes and that I truly could be thankful for all the situations that I had gone through. And so back to dreaming with God, you know, I, I uh, began to ask him, you know, Lord, you know, they, they say to dream big dreams and to bring, you know, to uh, God-sized dreams, and what does that look like? And so I remember having a dream one night, and when I, in the dream, I saw two capital letter Bs, B, B. <laughs> and so when I woke up, I said, Lord, what was that about? What were you trying to say to me through that? And he said, Tammy, not only do I want you to dream big, but I want you to believe big. And I thought, wow, that's so good. <laughs> because so many times we can dream. I mean, we can dream of a brighter future. We can dream of things for our children. But do we really believe that God's going to answer those prayers? Do we really believe that he is for us and he's going to work in us to see these things accomplished? And so that was a real turning point for me where I needed to truly believe what God said about me and the life that I was living. So I also wanted to encourage you that not only do you have a responsibility, you actually have a responsibility for those God-given dreams that are within you. You know, the Bible tells us that God knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. And he has a hope and a future for you. And it's not just to survive. Believe me, it's not. He has greater things for you. And I love the song lineup this morning. I couldn't have picked a better lineup, you know, for the songs about God doing greater things, you know, and that he has put dreams on the inside of you that are great, that are glorious for the greater good of his kingdom. And that's the kind of dreams I'm talking about. You know, what kind of dreams can you um, just embrace that the Lord has given you to change your city, to change your family, to change this world that we're living in? And so I just want to encourage you to seek that out. And, and uh, uh, Years ago, when I was just, I felt like I was stumbling a lot and falling a lot. You know, it's like I'm trying to walk this Christian walk. And I was just crying out to the Lord about, uh, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I messed up again. And I felt like the Lord said to practice the truth. That's right. There is no one like our God. <laughs> he is great. And I guess we need a praise moment. That's right. We praise you, God. <laughs> You're glorious, Lord, and we love you. Aw, he's so good. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, all right. 
I was talking about God dreams and just believing those things and just knowing that um, he's going to, to help you practice the truth. That's where I was. Yes, because, I, and he gave me an illustration of my kids playing ball. They don't get it perfect, you know, but they practice and they get better and they get better. And so the Lord said that he wanted me to practice hope. You know, he wanted me to practice these dreams that he had given and just take a risk, step out and let him meet me in those places where my faith needed to grow and to get bigger because of the big God that's on the inside of me and on the inside of you. So I wanted to share also about um, just how we can encourage others and how we can bring forth the dreams in their lives to just encourage their destiny. And I know that that's one thing uh, that I love about the, the ministry that I have, Access Ministries, is being able to minister to people one-on-one -on -one and just see their God dreams come alive, you know, to pray them through some inner healing and deliverance and get them to a place where they truly can believe the bigger picture and the things that God has for them. So I wanted to share a story about years ago I had taken a job of cleaning for this, this man who had gone through the loss of a child. A child of his has died, and because of the death of that child, his marriage didn't survive as well. And so he went through the death of a child and the death of his marriage. And so when I took this job on, um, I would go once every two weeks. And the first day that I got there, the Lord said that he wanted me to sing a song of healing over his house. And so I said, okay, Lord, I will do that. And so just as I was cleaning, I would just be singing for the Lord to bring healing to this man and to heal his soul, his woundedness, and release that in the atmosphere of his home. And at that time, he wasn't attending church uh, at all. But I noticed within a, just a few weeks, uh, a Bible was now on his nightstand. <laughs> so it's like, all right, God, thank you. So continue to just pray through his home and just bless his, his you know, where he was living and sleeping. And so then uh, I end up getting a phone call from him one day, and he said, um, I know you're a believer. I know you're a Christian. And he had grown up in a Catholic home. And he said, my mom and dad are really sick, and I really felt like I needed to call you and ask for prayer. I said, absolutely. So we prayed on the phone. Well, then, you know, it was probably a couple months later, I noticed um, that there was actually a, a bulletin on his <laughs> on his kitchen about a church. And so I thought, wow, this is cool. So he started going back to church. And so then, you know, as time progresses, he calls me again and he says, Tammy, would you pray for my, my spiritual journey? He said, I was raised as a Catholic, but I just don't feel like I fit. And I just feel like there's so much more. And so I'm rejoicing, you know, it's like, yes, yes. And so I said, there absolutely is. And so I prayed, you know, that the Lord would guide him and direct him to a church that would be good for him, that he would find fellowship. So then forward again, um, he ended up moving up to the Broad Ripple area and asked if I would continue to, to work for him. And I said, okay. So I ended up going up there. And there was one day in particular, um, the intercession hit me so strong. I'm in his house and I just am brought to my knees and I'm just weeping out, you know, weeping for this man and crying to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is, I know it's going to be big. And so, um, the following time I go to clean, he meets me in the front yard and he said, Oh, I just want to tell you, I got to go to a, a men's retreat called the great banquet. I said, oh, that's incredible. You know, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I knew it was something. <laughs> I knew God was up to something. And he said at that great banquet that the Lord brought healing to him because when he was on the way to the hospital with his son, he made a promise. He made a vow that everything was going to be okay. And it didn't end up okay at all because his son did pass. And so the Lord just let him see that whole situation through God's eyes. 
and he was able to receive healing for the loss of his son. So then fast forward, he had his own business. He ends up selling that business because he decides that he wants to go back to college and he wants to pursue the mission field. <laughs> yes. It was just amazing. He ended up having um, men's Bible studies in his home a couple nights a week. And uh, it was just, you know, it was just amazing. So the icing on the cake, I felt like the Lord said, your assignment here is almost over. And I said, okay, God, you know, I, that's fine. And so um, it was like my last day there. And he had an urn that he had his son's ashes in. And he said, the Lord spoke to me and said that it was time that I could spread these ashes now. And he said it was his seventh birthday today. And I began weeping. I said, do you know what seven means? <laughs> he said, what? I said, it means completion. And the Lord has completed a healing in you. And he was then able to release those ashes of his son and to move on. It was just amazing. And so, <laughs> it just brings me to tears to even think about it. You know, what are you speaking to the people that are in your life? You know, are you lifting them up? Are you speaking words of life? Are you encouraging them to pursue the God dreams that are within them? You know, this this man went on to, he, he's on the mission field and has since remarried and it's just amazing, you know, what the Lord's done in his life. And to think I got to be a little part of that, you know, just by praying for him and lifting him up and interceding for him. And so I just, you know, I just really felt very strongly to encourage you for that as well, that there's people in your life that just really need to hear that. Um, you know, I'm so thankful for, for Jason and Shelly, you know, with the, with the painting and Lily. <laughs> Glad you're here today and just to encourage you too with those dreams to dream big and, and, and glorify the Lord in all you do. Um, but I uh, was, uh, I was trying to think timeline. Forgive me. I think it was the first time uh, Jason and Shelley had come, come to my house. It was after they had started meeting at the park, at the uh, having church services there. And so Jason and Shelley came over, and there was one painting on my wall because I didn't paint. <laughs> I just felt like it was something that the Lord wanted me to do. And so I, take, I took a canvas, and I began to paint these trees. And each tree represented a family member. And as I was painting these trees, I felt like the Lord said to take the branches of the adults and make sure that they cover the children. And so as I'm painting, I'm thinking, oh, wow, God, that's really good. And so anyway, I do have that painting in, in my living room. And so when Jason and Shelly saw it, Jason said, so do you think you'll paint for us on Sunday mornings? <laughs> and I laughed and I said, no. <laughs> Just like Sarah, you know, she laughed when they said she was going to have a child. You know, this age, taking on something new. But I really, after I prayed about it, I felt like the Lord said yes, that that was something to, to just really step into. And once again, it was a dream I didn't even know that I really had. It took someone else just speaking life to me and encouraging me in that. And so now um, I love it. I'm just in... So thrilled, and thank you all so very much for your encouragement and how you just continue to pour your love out to me. I'm so thankful. And so I, I don't know if you knew this or not, but I, I do take it seriously. And over every painting, I'd love to pray, and I'll write the scripture in a watercolor pencil on the canvas. And so when I paint over that, then it just fades into the background. And so it's foundational, which God's word is foundational. And so I just love that, that I can do that for these paintings and then just pray over them, that they will touch someone's heart, you know, and, and just encourage them in their walk with the Lord. And so I just, you know, really um, want you to examine, you know, your life and what are you passionate about? You know, what, is, what are some things that God has put on the inside of you that maybe you haven't even stepped into yet that you need to just um, maybe 
put aside doubt and unbelief and ask the Lord for some strength and courage and to go after these things that he's put on the inside of you. I had read a devotional recently on my Bible app, and it stated that often your lack of dreams is tied to identity. And I, I thought that's really good. You know, sometimes, um, and, and it was my experience as well, I had to go through a, a period of healing before I could even believe God would want to use me in greater things. And so I just, want to encourage you with that as well, to get alone with the Lord. And just if there are areas that maybe you're, you're struggling, believing these dreams that God has placed on the inside of you, to ask him to bring the healing that you need so that you can truly step into all that he has. I co-founded a Higher Ground School of Ministry. And when I was teaching there, one of the videos that we showed to the students was from Bernie Uli from Bethel. And she encouraged everyone to take 45 minutes and sit down with God and just let him dream through you. And Bill Johnson said not to categorize these dreams, just to sit down and dream. And for instance, he said one of his dreams was to bag a 10 point buck. <laughs> Not a dream of mine, but it was of his. And so just to dream, you know, dream about your family, dream about your children, grandchildren, dream about um, the things in life that maybe you want, um, you know, better house, better car, all those things. It doesn't matter because God, he does. He, he loves you so much and he wants to bless you with things. He says, above all, that he wants to bless you with health and to, for you to prosper as your soul prospers. And so he has good for you. So anyway, with that assignment, so I, I challenge you, go home, get alone with God, and then write out some dreams and let him surprise you And even those. I think it's fun. <laughs> And so then I wanted to also another tool that can be used as a, a vision board. Um, and I love the scripture, Habakkuk 2.2. And it says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And so sometimes I think we need to write them down. There's something very powerful about that. I just want to encourage you. It seems like when I write things down, they tend to happen. But if I don't, don't you know, make, um, make a point to do that, then it seems like they don't. So I just want to encourage you to do that, to write it down, make it plain. And so anyway, I had encouraged the students to make a, a vision board. And with that, we just took poster board and cut out some scriptures. I'd printed some out, um, like I put on there, believe big, <laughs> dream big, believe big. And then some of these scriptures, and I put on there a section that was for my family, my children and my grandchildren believing for their lives. There was another section uh, for my health and another section like for mission trips and, and that kind of thing. And just to really, um, stir up, you know, those gifts that are within, those dreams that are within. And there was um, one lady, it was funny, because I told the class that we were going to do these vision boards, and she kind of scoffed at it, and she said, quite honestly, when I told her that that's what we were going to do, she thought it was kind of silly. But... She said after she did the vision board that she was crying as she was describing it, she said that it actually brought healing to her soul just over her life. And God reignited those dreams that were within her that, excuse me, that she didn't realize had died. And so it was just incredible how the Lord did that for her. Okay. All right. So uh, I felt like the Lord wanted me to ask you just a, a couple questions. You know, are there dreams that have died? 
have you had some dreams that maybe life has just thrown you some curves <laughs> and you've thought, well, these things are never going to happen. And so I just want you to think about those things. We're going to have a time at the altar here in just a little bit where I really felt like the Lord wanted to pray into that for each one of you, that he wants to bring you out of survival mode and he wants to bring you into a place where you're truly thriving, where you're truly living for his glory. We want to make God famous in our lives. We want to do things for him. You know, we want to glorify him. One of my prayers is, Lord, I want to glorify you in, in what I say and in what I do. And that's what he has for each one of us, is to glorify him in whatever way that looks like. And in, in your role, your mountain of influence, the Lord wants to just bless you to thrive and to flourish. And so I went in to um, read these, some of these verses over you. Uh, I love Psalm 126, 1, and it said, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Don't you love that? It's like the Lord wants to restore to you. He does. He wants to bring good things your way, and he wants you to dream. And he wants you to dream big, bold dreams that only God could do to partner with him and to accomplish great things. Uh, John 14, 13. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yeah. Amen. Yes. John 14, 14. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Once again, do we believe that? You know, and if you're having a, a problem believing that, then once again, just open up to the Lord and, and ask him, Lord, bring healing to that part of me that isn't believing. Lord, that I need healing so that I can believe. Uh, John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. John 16, 23. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Verily, verily, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. John 16, 24. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And I love that, uh, that... You know, as you step into the things that God really has for you to do, the calling upon your life, that's when you experience the greatest satisfaction, the greatest joy, is when you're walking in His will for your life. John 16, 26, In that day you will ask in my name, and I will ask the Father on your behalf. James 4, 2, You do not have because you do not ask. And so be bold in your asking as well. God loves it when you come to him and you ask him for things. He's so ready. <laughs> He's so ready to hear your request. He loves to, to lavish his love on you. Matthew 7, 7 through 12. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? So as an encouragement, once again, I challenge you to ask God for big, bold dreams and to have faith-filled prayers that are full of confidence. So that's the message for you today. <laughs> All right. So now if we could have just some ambient music. And I would like for the altar workers to come forward. And I just want to encourage you all to come forward for prayer. And I'm going to release this prayer over you before you come. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for creating us in your image. Thank you for the dreams that you have for us. Thank you for creating us with a hope and a future. Thank you for giving us good gifts for us to use to make you famous, to bring you glory, honor, and praise. 
that the world would see you through us and praise your holy name. We come together in agreement and we break off any lies that we've believed about you or ourselves. We break off all disappointment, break off all discouragement, all doubt, all unbelief, and we bind any tactics of the enemy. Father, we loose the dreams to come forth. Lord, let us dream for the first time. Or Lord, let us dream again, and we speak dead dreams to be resurrected. Father, we pray that healing would come to our body, soul, and spirit. And we ask that you would ignite us with your fire, that we would burn for you and we would change our world for your glory. Lord, we thank you for the city of Martinsville and we thank you for our mountains of influence. Lord, we thank you that each one of us can change the city. Lord, we can go out and we can minister to the lost. Lord, we can heal the sick. Lord, we can raise the dead. Lord, we can further your kingdom. And so, Father, we're thanking you this morning for a release of dreams and for us to go forth in your name, doing greater works for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I just also want to encourage you, any need that you have, I know I really felt led to pray for dreams today, but if there's anything on your heart that you need prayer for, please feel free to come forward. Thank you.